Following the First World War, the countries that found themselves victorious saw a rise in their economic status. We saw a really interesting transitional period from just getting from point A to point B to doing it in style, with luxury, under speed, and a lot of that is embodied in not just Bentley as an automobile, but in the people who made Bentley as famous as it was, the Bentley boys. W.O. Bentley, the man behind the company, was not so atypical of a turn-of-the-century automobile manufacturer. He worked his way to an engineering degree, owned an automobile dealership with his brother in 1912, raced motorcycles, um, and really settled into manufacturing during the First World War, building rotary aircraft engines. Following the war, he transitioned into building those luxury automobiles that would make his name so famous. Around 1922, in anticipation of the first running of the 24 Hours at Le Mans, Bentley was approached by a race driver by the name of Duff, seeking factory backing. And while Bentley wasn't particularly interested in sponsoring a race team, he thought cars weren't meant to run that fast, that long. He provided the backing nonetheless, but it was almost dismissive of the whole affair. Maybe he got jittery, maybe he was just curious about his investment and decided at the last minute to attend Le Mans. He arrived moments before the race started. And it wasn't until about midnight, once the cars were running in the dark, that he really Really fell in love. He was undeniably bitten by the racing bug. They came back in 1924 much better informed, much better prepared, and that's when they really started their roll call of wins. So as Bentley became more and more ensconced in the racing community, of course he needed to have drivers to support a team of factory racers. Those racers became collectively known as the Bentley Boys, and they really introduced us to and defined a genre of what is known as the Playboy Racer. They were the cream of the social crop. They were aristocrats, they were doctors, they were journalists. Almost all of them were amateur racers. One of my favorite anecdotes that really epitomizes the concept of the Playboy Racer uh, is a story about their soirees on the weekends that everyone would arrive in their fast cars in tuxedos and gowns and on one particular occasion they had laid out pit stops up the long winding driveway and the attendees at the party would navigate the driveway stopping at the pit stops and because it was a cocktail party rather than fuel and tires they would take on drinks. Le Mans would go on to become the most important proving ground not only for the drivers but for Bentley's automobiles as well and beginning in 1927 set a four-year streak that was unparalleled and in 29 they took the top four spots. 1930 would take the top two places and nobody else could hold a candle to what the team was doing. Among the Bentley boys, the biggest and the brightest of the group was Wolf Barnato. He was the heir to a diamond fortune, among other things. In 1930, he took it upon himself to race the Blue Train, the French transcontinental luxury train that traveled from Cannes to Calais in one of his Bentley automobiles. There's a discrepancy in which vehicle did he actually achieve this success in. Was it his two-door gurney nutting bodied Bentley or his four-door Moliner bodied saloon? When Barnato and his companion undertook the journey, they leisurely finished their drinks at the club they were sitting in at Con, strolled to the Bentley, hopped aboard, and then raced like crazy across the country. You may think that a train which makes multiple stops might not be all that difficult to better the speed of, but you need to consider the roads in France at the time. They were traveling at the best of conditions on a dirt road. So to traverse that distance in that amount of time actually was a, a pretty interesting and, and remarkable feat. Other drivers had raced the train in their automobile. What Barnato accomplished was actually bettering the time of the train. He didn't stop at Calais, which was the terminus of the train line. He boarded his car on a cross-channel steam packet, drove to London, and by the time they were beginning their first drink in London, the train was pulling into Calais at that moment. By the end of the 1920s, despite Bentley's dominance of racing, and particularly Le Mans, uh, the economic downturn at the period really saw a withdrawal, a retreat from building bigger, more powerful, more luxurious automobiles and Bentley was sold to Rolls-Royce, ending an era. And W.O. Bentley himself said that it was only an era like the 1920s that could have produced the Bentley Boys. 